Hello students, Ms. Watson here, and today we're taking a look at curved mirrors. Now curved mirrors are not as common to see in everyday life, but this picture shows a great example. You may have seen a security mirror, or sometimes mirrors in parking garages so cars can see around uh, corners. These are great examples of curved mirrors. So we have a couple learning goals here today. The first is to describe the properties of curved mirrors, and the second is to provide and identify examples of curved mirrors. So we'll start off with a little bit of terminology. If you have a curved mirror that curves and the shiny side bends away from you, this is called a concave mirror. So the shiny side bends away from you, and a way that some students remember this, it's almost like you could walk inside of it. It's like walking into a cave, so it's called concave. And what we would call a line, this would be an imaginary line that goes uh, perpendicular to the very uh, edge of that uh, concave mirror. So it goes straight through the middle. We call this the principal axis. Now there are a few points that we need to know on the principal axis. The first is the vertex, and this is the exact point where the principal axis crosses the, um, the edge of the mirror, and this happens at 90 degrees, so it's perpendicular. The center of curvature, or C, is the place where if that mirror was an entire circle all the way around, it would be the very center of that circle. Halfway between C and the vertex is the focus, or F. So halfway between those two is the focus. Um, and we'll see in a second what the focus actually means. So here, if we have uh, a concave mirror and we have the focus uh, drawn in the picture there, the point where parallel incident rays converge is when, when they are reflected off the mirror is the focus. So parallel means that they don't cross, so there are a bunch of lines that are coming towards uh, the mirror that don't cross, they're parallel to each other. Parallel incident rays, incident rays are the ones that come towards the mirror. Where they converge, converge means where they cross once they are reflected off the mirror. So let's take a look at what would happen if we have parallel incident rays. So if we have a ray, it would go through F, the next one through F, and all of these rays that bounce off of the mirror cross through the focus. So when we learn to draw our ray diagrams, we'll be drawing lines that are parallel to the principal axis and that reflect off through the focus. And concave mirrors, let's take a look at a couple examples. The scoop part of a spoon where the food would actually go. Uh, makeup mirrors, that's another great example. Now let's take a look at convex mirrors. In this case, the shiny side bends towards you. So you can't walk into it like a cave, the shiny side bends towards you. Again, we have a principal axis, um, imaginary line that would go through the center of that mirror. The vertex, the point where the principal axis and the mirror cross at 90 degrees. There's the center of curvature, which is the center if that mirror was a full circle and the focus, which is halfway between the center of curvature and the vertex. And if we take a look at the focus of a convex mirror, it's the point where parallel incident rays appear to come from when they are reflected off the mirror surface. So in this case, when parallel incident rays hit the mirror, they're actually going to separate further apart. They're not ever going to converge. They're going to separate further apart. But if we backtrack, and go to on the other side of the mirror, it's as if those rays actually crossed at a point, and that's the focus. So let's see how that looks. So here we have an incident ray. It looks as if it came from the focus, and each of these rays, the way that they reflect off of the mirror is, is as if they came from that focus. And then here are some examples. The back part of a spoon or security mirrors like we saw in that first picture. So here's another look at our learning goals. You should be able to describe the properties of curved mirrors, and you should be able to provide and identify examples of curved mirrors. If you can do this, fantastic. If not, please rewatch the video, and if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. All right, that's all for now. Bye-bye.